Hey guys, welcome back. In this video, we're going to go over a moment of inertia. So let's get going. Okay, so the first thing it says here is that in linear dynamics, an unbalanced force produces a linear acceleration. The magnitude of the linear acceleration produced by a given unbalanced force will depend on the mass of the object. So this is something that you will have seen since third year because it's basically just Newton's second law it's describing. So an unbalanced force produces a linear acceleration. But we're now linking this idea of an object's mass to something called inertia. And the word inertia itself can be loosely described as an object's resistance to change its own motion. So objects with a large mass are difficult to start moving and once moving are difficult to stop. So an example of this to think about is a massive boulder rolling towards you. So to get that massive boulder moving in the first place, it's going to be quite difficult because it's got a large inertia. Now if it was coming towards you, you'd probably want to run or jump out the way because it's going to be quite difficult to actually stop once it's already moving because it's going to have picked up momentum as it's moving. So based on that idea of inertia, we've actually got something called moment of inertia which is given the symbol I. And the moment of inertia I of an object is a measure of its resistance to change angular acceleration about a given axis. So remember, we're still talking about objects moving with circular motion, so we want to keep that in our definitions. So we're now thinking about how easy or difficult it is for an object to keep moving in a circular motion. So the moment of inertia for rotational motion is analogous to the mass m for linear motion. So remember in a previous video we compared linear versus angular motion and this is kind of doing the same thing here. So moment of inertia i we're saying is basically just the angular form of mass. And an important point to note here is that it depends on the mass of the body and the distribution of its mass about a given axis of rotation. So how easy or how difficult it is to rotate something will depend on the mass of that body and how close to the axis or further away from the axis that mass is. Now for a mass m at a distance r from the axis of rotation, the moment of inertia of this mass is given by this relationship here. So it says that i equals m times r squared, where i is the moment of inertia measured in kilogram meters squared, m is mass measured in kilograms, and r is the distance from the axis of rotation measured in meters, just like it was for torque. So the reason moment of inertia has the units kilogram meters squared is we can see it from the equation. If you multiply the units for mass by the units for distance squared, you get kilograms meters squared. Note that this equation can only be used for objects where all the mass can be considered to be at the same distance from the axis of rotation. This is the same as assuming that all of the object's mass is at its centre, i.e. a point mass. Now this isn't really the case for a lot of objects, but we're going to see later on that we've got different expressions for different shapes of objects. So this is the case for a point mass. So if we're considering a single point mass where all of its mass can be considered to be at the centre of the object, then we can use this equation i equals mr squared, which is the simplest form of this equation that we we'll see. It then says, however, most objects do not have all their mass at a single distance from the axis of rotation, and we must consider the distribution of the mass. So consider this little scenario here. So consider a small particle of a disk as shown below. So we've got this particle of mass m on this disk, and it's a distance r away from the axis of rotation o. Then we can say that the contribution of this mass to the moment of inertia of the whole object, in this case a disk, is given by the mass m multiplied by r squared. We just saw that for a point mass, it's going to be m r squared. And then to obtain the moment of inertia of the disk, we need to consider all the particles of the disk, each at their different distances away from the axis of rotation. So if we go back to the picture, imagine there's a mass over here, a mass here, a mass here, a mass here, and all across that disk there's going to be point masses. So we need to consider all the point masses on that disk at their different distances away from the axis of rotation. So if we do that, then it says any object can be considered to be made of n particles each of a mass m. Each particle is at a particular radius r from the axis of rotation. The moment of inertia of the object is determined by the summation of all these discrete masses for the n particles. That is, i equals the sum of mr squared. So if we add up all the individual mr squareds, we get this expression here. Now the last point to note is that masses of different shapes have different moments of inertia, as we said earlier. Now note that these expressions are given in the relationship sheet in the exam, and we've got one, two, three, four, five different expressions, depending on what shape it is. So we've already seen that the point mass is i equals mr squared. If we've got a rod rotating about its centre, like this, then it's i equals a twelfth ml squared, where l is just the length of the rod. And if we've got a rod rotating about its end, rather than at its centre, it's i equals a third ml squared, where again l is the length of the rod. Now notice that the moment of inertia for rotating a rod about its end is actually four times greater than the moment of inertia 
for rotating the rod about its centre, and that's because we've got more mass at a greater distance from the axis of rotation, so it should be a bit harder to rotate the rod about the end compared to the rod rotating about its centre. Next we have a disc rotating about its centre, which is given by the expression i equals a half mr squared, where r is just the radius of that disc, and lastly we have the sphere rotating about its centre, where r is the radius of the sphere, and we have an expression of i equals 2 fifths mr squared for that one. Now because 0 0.5 a half is greater than 0 0.4 from the 2 fifths, then that means that rotating a disc about its centre actually has a greater moment of inertia than rotating a sphere about its centre. And just remember you will get these expressions in the exam, so you don't need to remember them. That's all from me folks, I hope you found the video useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.